Good morning and welcome back to another edition of Gary's Movie Aporium. Today is going to be another Wild Eye releasing movie review uh, for this uh, Saturday. Uh, it's called Werewolf Island. Uh, it's it, it's out of 2020. Um, it's currently getting a 3.8 or 3.8 on IMDb. Currently, you can watch this film on IMDb TV as well for free. I'm not trying to push it for free. I'd rather you, you know, buy it from Wild Eye, you know, support their cause. Uh, but it's also known as the Legend of Do um, the Legend of Dog Lady Island. That's the original title. It also goes by the name She Bites. Uh, it's loosely based on the uh, Dog Lady Island urban legend as well. Um, the island where it takes place, they call it Dog Lady Island currently, but the Old timers in town call it Cosler's Island. Um, the movie was directed by Michael James Alexander and written by Michael James Alexander. It stars T.J. Storm, Michael Wayne Foster, John Wells. Uh, the music was done by Kazad Patel. Uh, 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 special effects and makeup were done by Nancy Deswine uh, and Morgan Getty. And the sound sound for the movie is done by Matt Sisko and Bry Bryce Cook. Uh, basically, the plot of the movie is based on an actual urban legend, Werewolf Island. Uh, the island has, uh, has been the scene of many unexplained attacks and murders over the decades. After a close family member is attacked, a detective finds himself obsessed with the island and its secrets. Uh, currently, its distributors for this movie was uh, Summerhill Films. Tomcat films and uh, obviously Wild Eye releasing with a physical disc here. Production company was West West Side Warrior Films. Filming locations were done in uh, Monroe, Michigan, the actual place where um, it's mentioned in the film a few times. Uh, and it's also labeled a thriller as well, not really horror. It's more like a thriller than horror. Uh, it doesn't really come off like a werewolf movie. It's more like about a she creature. But basically, it starts off with a couple in a car, and it shows the girl uh, really, you know, beside herself and crying. Uh, her boyfriend, Ben, well, the lady's name is Lily, by the way, if I didn't mention it. Uh, they make a call to Ben's uncle, Mike, who happens to be a police officer, a, a police detective on the police force. Uh, and he wants to tell his uncle about what they had seen, and... And he starts to tell him, and he says, oh, like, don't get yourself over, you know, worked about it. You're driving a car. You're going to get in a wreck because you're getting so stressed, and I don't want that to happen. Come on over to the house, and, and we'll talk it over about what, what you're going through, what you know, what you've seen. Um, then, then they arrive there at his Uncle Mike's, and then uh, they sit down. Uh, Lily tells, tells the un Ben's uncle uh, they went to Dog Island, they went out there, and the creature popped up out of nowhere and tried to kill Lily from underneath, uh, it looked like a sleeping bag or, or whatever. I couldn't really tell if it was a sleeping bag or blanket, but this was when Ben went to the bathroom after they had had sex up there in the woods. Um, but, uh, he had, he chased, he had, uh, chased the, the, um, creature off with a machete, uh, at that point, okay, th at that point, of course, now the uncle wants to follow up the events of what's going on up there. So, uh, he goes up there, or he doesn't go up there yet, but he goes to a, a place that he wants to get some evidence for. And he, he wants to go up and investigate this urban legend to see if it's really real. Uh... And then, after that, it shows Lily going to her grandfather's, and there's a little bit of secret about her grandfather later on in the movie, and she's telling him what happened. Uh, he told her she shouldn't have went up there anyway, because the, leg the legend is very real, at least, you know, in his eyes, and she should have knew better, and that he's just thankful she's alive. He makes her dinner, and then it cuts to the next scene. Uncle Mike, the police detective, uh, Ben's Ben's uncle, is then shown going to a, a man in his backyard, 
and ask him if he has uh, seen anything weird on the island, because I guess he must live really close to the island or goes there frequently or, I don't know, he just, he's basically, uh, this comes off as like a town historian. Uh, he knows about the legend and, uh, and the island, apparently. Uh, apparently, way back when, it looked like maybe the 1700s, 1800s, I couldn't really tell. Uh, apparently the land had a history of the French wanting to throw the Indian. He goes on to tell a story about how the French want to throw the Indians off the territory because uh, the land appeases them and, you know, they they like the location and it's kind of like on an island by itself and, you know, it'd be easy to get in and out, you know, with ships and stuff. And so they go to the chief, chief tribal leader telling him to leave or there will be consequences if he stays. Uh, the chief tells him he's staying and they're not going anywhere. It stages a little bit of a war. It's more like a squirmish. I wouldn't really call it a war, really, but, it, you know, it's between a few. Uh, my only complaint here is probably I would have got a few more people. I understand that it's on a budget constraint, but I would have had a few more, you know, like back, you know, backstage kind of actors or something, you know, a few more to make it look a little bit more imposing, but. Uh, a little bit of a squirmish breaks out. They kill the uh, chief's elder, the chief elder's daughters. Um, and before all of this, the chief places a curse to the island and its inhabitants. Uh, his daughters are cut down by the French, and the numbers are too great for the Indian tribe. I wouldn't. I would have added a few more Indian tribe members as well, just to you know give it more of a uh, you know a battlefield more or less. But I understand why they didn't, because you know obvious budget constraints. But uh, the French are celebrating their victory that night, and they're and it's, the legend has it that they they sat around their campfires and each one of them had their throat ripped out uh, by the she creature. Um, Basically, what's going on on this island already is if there's violent, violent acts and the do-gooders are, you know, just minding their own business or, you know, they don't want no, you know, they don't want no fighting or, you know, or any violent acts going on. Uh, whoever puts on this medallion that the ch uh, chief has placed a curse upon um, will come back as the woman will come back as a she-creature. And this is kind of what happens, and this is what happens to the Frenchmen. They're, they're attacked at night, and they're all left for dead. And then the town historian mentioned, um, then there was a follow-up story to this, proving that this island is cursed. Uh, in 1920, a rich couple purchased the island. They settled down to go to lot, go on to live in a fancy cottage with their two daughters. Well, no, I don't know if it's a daughter, two daughters, but a daughter and a son, I guess. Um, but more tragedy rears its ugly head. Uh, during this story, when a car pulls up with three men who look like hired men with a ringleader, with one ringleader, like a mafia type uh, deal, he offers a lucrative business proposition to Mickey, the kid's father. Mickey, the, the guy, the, the one that they're offering a deal to. He comes off like he's threatening him with some uh, tough guy enforcement if, ne if necessary, but uh, leader ringleader denies that's what he's there for. Uh, basically, he wants them to store illegal alcohol shipments on his property, and he wants no. And Mickey wants no part of it because his family's going to be put in danger. Because you know, usually illegal activity is going to lead to some you know some people uh, dying or you know being terrorized or you know being asked questions about the you know like cops might come around and ask him what's going on and. He doesn't want no part of that. So this ticks the men off. Uh, they vow they will be back tomorrow, and they deliver on that promise where they kill Mickey, the father, in a scuffle, and the big boss wants them to drown the kids in the lake, leaving no witnesses to the father dying. Uh, the demented guy in the group, the, the muscle, if you will, uh, takes the mom into, a, into the bedroom and rapes her. It's it's not like really like it's kind of like implied. It is not like it really is like graphic, and I'm thankful that it's not because I don't really like rape scenes. All that you know, 
I don't think they really are that. You know, like, unless it's like, um, I spit on your grave, I understand, because that's what that's about, but I just, I don't, I don't like rape, per se, in movies, um, but she's so distraught over the rape and losing her husband and not knowing what's going on with her kids, she hangs her fr herself from a tree in the quad due to the tragedy she had to endure. Uh, they go back to see where she where she is because they leave her at he leaves after he does that and he, they all come back. Uh, she's no longer hanging in the tree, and now she's turned into the she creature, which is kind of random. I mean, I mean it is because of the curse, but I just I. Wasn't an expect. I I just I don't know. I just thought she was dead for good. I didn't I didn't know where they were going here in this part. And this she creature came back again. So now I'm kind of seeing what they're doing there. I didn't know if this she creature was kind of like a time traveling kind of thing. But uh, apparently anyone that's kind of like the crow. Like if you're kind of like if you're um, you know your life is tough turned upside down by these bad guys or bad you know anybody bad and you die your family members die you, this one person comes back to avenge other deaths and that's kind of what's, what this movie's about it's really not what I'd call a werewolf werewolf movie uh, it's more about a she creature uh, but she kills the three men leaving uh, she leave, after she kills them it shows her spirit from her body I, apparently she's now dead because she completed what she needed to do to get revenge on the men for killing uh, her, all of her family because they take the kids out. I don't like to say this part, but they say that they take the kids out to the lake and drown them, hold them to the bottom, if you will, so there's no you know no trail left behind of any, any wrongdoing. Uh, that's a really kind of tough part to handle, but I understand the mafia do stuff like that. Uh... And then, and then it kind of flashes uh, back to the present, and a town historian now flashes into the 70s, where a couple were hired by new owners uh, to be the groundskeepers. And the grounds, or the historian tells uh, Uncle Mike, he looks very much like the man, the the father. I think he was a descendant or something. They said, uh, like a, I don't know if he's like a long lost. I don't know, cousin or whatever, but uh, the, the couple had a couple of kids and they were terrorized by bikers and their mom, Angel, um, is left, is basically left in this group, more or less, like her, the father's killed. I uh, don't know, I can't remember what happened to the kids, they didn't really show, I could have swore he said, uh, I could have swore they, they were, I don't know if they were actually killed I couldn't remember if they actually died or not uh, I assume that they did maybe because they did say something about taking them somewhere but then you never really see them again so it's kind of just implied I mean it's that's why I say this isn't a very, a very graphic movie at all uh, but uh, the, these bikers uh, don't want to leave the island in in uh, uh, what's his name here Well, the descendant of Uncle Mike, um, the character looks very much like Uncle Mike, but uh, that's why the historian's kind of thrown for a loop about it. Uh, and I guess then it goes back to a backstory about a backstory on the 70s story I'm talking about. It goes back to when the gang actually had the run-in that got the relationship this bad. Uh, they run into the gang... Uh, he tells them they're not welcome on the island. Uh, he knows that they're there for no, you know, no good deeds, and he has a job to do. He's working for this rich uh, family, and he wants to keep the island in an orderly fashion. The bikers like the island, and they want to remain. And despite their being threatened with the law by uh, the descendant of Uncle Mike, let's uh, the the bikers are going to do what they want. They're bikers, more or less. You know, you're not going to just throw them off there and tell them to go away. That's not going to happen. Uh, but now the gang want the island more than ever. Uh, so they go back. They pay the family a visit when they're eating dinner. 
Uh, they get the father to go out on the porch, which is, is a descendant of Uncle Mike, and where they hit him and kick him. And I don't know if they stabbed him. I couldn't really tell. It looked like they could have stabbed him because he does have a pool of blood underneath him when he's on the uh, cement slab outside his uh, porch. And there is a bunch of blood, so I don't know if they quick stabbed him and you couldn't see it and it was kind of concealed, kind of like in prison when they, when they, uh, whatever that's called, when they, when they, uh, take you into, you know, like and kill you really fast in, in uh, the prisons and stuff. Um, you see him bleeding badly and they grab the wife and tie her up and take her to a room. And then I assumed that they were having their way with her, but she's closed. So I'm assuming nothing went on. Um, let's see. And now, okay, now they want, this is where I was talking about. They want to kill the children. So there's no witnesses. Like I said, they grab Angel, the mom. And pin her down, telling her they're going to cut her tongue out so she can't tell anyone. She passes out from the shock and comes back as a she creature again, which is kind of like, kind of like almost like the Hulk in a sense, because like it's kind of like if you tick, tick the, the women off in this or whatever, they come back as a she creature, which is kind of cool in a way, but, um, there's just really no, my problem with it is really there's no, suspense building to it when it happens it just like i don't know i just i just wish there would have been a little bit more music playing uh I don't know, a little bit more i don't know what you want to call it it was it wasn't a bad movie but it could have been a lot more here and there but uh she comes back as a she creature and due to the acts of violence placed on her family some of the bikers managed to get away and this is how Lily's grandfather is coming into all of this because he he apparently is one of the bikers and he and it goes by years later and he kind of lives with us all through his life and personally I would have told somebody because I mean you killed the you know you left what you thought you killed was a family and and basically this story is also proving this curse curse is very much alive and keep kicking and at some point, it needs to be finalized or it's just going to keep going on for decades and more tragedy is going to happen. Uh, Lily's granddad, who I was mentioning, uh, I think his name was Lucky. He's anything but lucky in this here and there. But uh, he wants it to end and he wants to tell Lily what's going on, uh, but doesn't really go into detail. Um, this talisman is what they need to get get back and they need to get rid of it because if they get rid of it then the curse will be lifted and there will be no more you know urban legend and no more death and uh he wants to go out there and i guess it's buried uh because i don't know if angel buried it herself after uh she enacted her revenge on the men or what but i can't remember they buried it i don't know if the kids had buried it for her uh, she is buried and it gets unburied because the town historian told him, he goes, hey, I know where it's buried. You need to go out there and unbur unbury it and, you know, get rid of the curse. Uncle Mike uh, goes out there to try to stop Lily's grandfather to make sure there's no harm that comes to him because he's in danger because he is one of the gang members and Angel is, you know, her the she creature herself is out there wanting to kill still to get her revenge for her family and at this point it seems like everyone is heading out to the island to put an end to the curse once and for all uh at some point uncle mike stops lucky and tells him we're here to help you and he gets freaked out and he shoots uncle mike um killing him and in the process not realizing he is there to help him and then runs off and runs into lily and ben and then the she creature comes out of nowhere, angel, if you will, comes out of nowhere and tears uh, um, Uncle or the grandfather's head off. Or Lucky tears off Lucky's head, uh, getting her revenge. And now Angel's spirit can be free. Uh, then an unexpected twist happens. Uh, Uncle Mike's captain at the precinct shows up and. He's there to tell Uncle Mike he needs to stay away from the island. He told him not to go there in the first place. 
But then he reveals that he, too, was a part of this motorcycle gang. Uh, and all of a sudden, Angel pops up in the back of the squad car, killing him, ripping. It looked like his heart. It could have ripped off his badge, but it looked like she ripped out his heart. And, and now the curse has run its full circle. And it's kind of implied that, like, that's the end of this curse. You know, like, like that's it. But then I stayed around for the, I stood around for the last, I don't know, right up until the credits. Because sometimes I like these Easter eggs. I try to search for them. Uh, the last 20 seconds of this movie, it shows that the town historians, historian saying it's finally over. But then he says, or is it? And then it fades to black. So it kind of it kind of threw a little nugget out there that they might have a sequel. Uh, I think it wouldn't take much to start the curse over again, honestly. Uh, it felt very much like it, you know, could have had a sequel down the road or could have one. But uh, it's not a bad little film. Um, I've, I've watched better from Wild Eye, but I don't really put it on Wild Eye because it was, um, I think it was distributed through them. But it's not a bad film or anything, but uh, I just wish it would have been a little bit more scary. But I, I like some of the elements that it was going for, like it went for the gangster look one minute. Then it went for the 70s vibe. Uh, I just wish there would have been a, more, a little bit more intensity with the with the monster. Uh, it just really didn't come off all that scary like some of the some of the other Wild Eye films. Uh, but I, I would uh I would give it, you know, maybe a six point five. Not not horrible, but not not great either. But I, I'm going to give it a rating of about 6.5. Um, it went by pretty fast. And I'm pretty much, you know, I know the movie from beginning to end because it was just like, uh, just so easy to remember a lot of it. Just like a lot of things that went on it. But that's my review for Were Werewolf Island. Um, be sure to look up uh, Wild Eye Releasing and check out their titles off their uh, physical site and where you can, you know, they have a YouTube site as well. You can find things on there. Uh, on you know, they got plenty of trailers. Uh, you can check them out. There are a lot of their titles out out on Tubi. Um, from what I'm seeing, uh, they do have a, a number of titles selling on Amazon as well, um, eBay. But uh, when you go to Amazon, you have you have Amazon Prime. You, you save on the shipping. So. That's my review for Werewolf Island. Thank you, Wild Eye, and thank you, viewers, for taking in these reviews. And I'll be back with uh, many of these uh, Wild Eye re uh, reviews in the future. See you later, guys. Take care. Bye.